Hey y'all, welcome back. I'm Shayna Searcy and I am so excited to paint with you today. Today we're going to be doing another Try It Tuesday where we're going to be painting small but thinking big, learning big ideas. And we are going to be focusing on trying two new brushes. Um, I'm a big proponent of you don't have to have a lot of different fancy brushes um, to do the majority of what you would want to do in watercolor. I use primarily round brushes and other artists have their favorite brushes. Um, but sometimes it's fun to experiment with different brushes. So I have two new brushes. Our subject matter today is going to be the Lenten Rose. So this is a flower that came up or comes up in my garden super early. Like this, this little guy has been uh, blooming like this. I just cut them this morning for three weeks now and it is now April 1st. So beginning of March, this, this little guy popped up, um, survived a snowstorm, survived frost and is still going strong out there. So these are very hardy early spring flowers and uh, super inspired by them. So we're going to use this as our subject matter today. And I'm going to be using my um, the two brushes that I'm going to be introducing, um, this is a filbert brush. So you can see it has a rounded end to it. So this is a round brush that comes to a point. Um, and this one here, um, has like a graduated point. So it's rounded at the end. And then this is technically a round brush, but this is a petite round. Um, it's a Princeton select brush and you can see it has I don't know if you can see, it's very, very tiny. Here, let me hold this up here. So very tiny, tiny brush. This is a 12 out of zero. So very, very tiny. And it has a nice thick handle. Um, so I kind of like this one instead of having a really thin petite handle to go with it, like some of my other really tiny brushes. I like that it has this nice thick handle. I feel like I have a lot of control with it. So we're gonna use these two brushes to create um, a version of this uh, with our Lenten Rose. So let's get started. All right, so first I'm gonna tape down my paper just so I have a little more control over it and I create a nice little border around the edges. You can do that too. This one isn't super water heavy, so if you didn't tape it down, it would be okay, um, especially if you're using a good quality or higher quality paper um, with a lot of cotton content. 100% cotton. Um, I'm using Arsh watercolor paper, but a tiny little size. So this is about, let's see, um, probably six inches by just under four inches. So tiny little piece of paper. You could even go smaller for this if you wanted to, if you wanted to really preserve your paper as you try this out. But yeah, you don't need to start on a huge sheet of paper, especially when you're trying new brushes, new techniques, um, testing out colors and uh, color palettes. All right, so I have my water, and then last but not least, I have my color palette. We'll sneak you in here. This is my Core Watercolor Palette, QOR by Golden. Um, any other popular brands, feel free to use whatever you have. Um, I'll be sticking to some basic colors, magenta, dioxazine, purple, sap green um, for the most part. So we're going to be creating, we're going to be doing our best to recreate this beautiful um, purpley color. And then you can see in the middle, we have kind of this white, yellowish white stamen area. It's very detailed. We're not going to get into all of these details in this one as we're just kind of trying it out, but this would be a great subject to use, um, uh, to go in and use masking fluid to kind of mask out some of these detailed areas and paint them in later. Um, so, and it could be super detailed, blowing this up really big, um, and getting all those details would be super fun. All right. So I'm going to pull out some dioxazine purple here in my palette. And I'm using my um, filbert brush here to mix this, but you can use any other ones. And I'm going to pull out some magenta as well. And I'm just going to mix this in my palette. We're not going to get exact color. This is going to be a little brighter. This one is a little bit uh, desaturated. I could desaturate this a tiny bit with my green. Let me pull a little bit of this watered down sap green in here. 
We'll desaturate this a little bit, giving it more of an earth tone, natural color, which is a little bit closer to this. So I think we're pretty close to this beautiful purple color, purpley pink. Let's keep you in frame. You are our inspiration today. All right. So with this brush, I have this nice rounded edge. So I'm just going to be creating, now these are a little bit more purple than the color that we've created here, but I'm going to be creating kind of these overlapping petals. We're gonna keep this pretty loose and um, we're going to be using um, another color. I didn't mention probably some yellow in the center and I will pull that out momentarily. A oh, nice watered down light yellow color with some green to create that stamen area. But again, we're not going to get super detailed. All right. So for these flowers and my, my brush, I have the luxury. It doesn't come to a full point. So the tops of my petals are already nice and rounded. And I'm just going to create, so this is going to be like the top of a petal. Nice and wide, leaving some white space in there. And then I'm going to do another one kind of curling out to the side here. And I'm just adding water. And we can add layers to create some texture later on. So this is kind of the back area. Now you can do the same thing facing the front if you want it to be looking like wide open at you or if you want to tilt it a little bit away from you. We already have kind of these three in the back here and then we would do something that is thinner kind of like this in the front kind of round it off. So we're actually seeing the underside of the leaf and this is the, or the, the petal, not the leaf. And this is the top up here. And then leaving that middle open to create our stamen in the middle. So we're going to do this a bunch of times and just kind of change the shape. And I really like this brush for this, this wide top, creating these nice soft edges and I'm going to overlap. So, this one is going to go behind that one, curl up here. And, and again, we're just leaving those centers open. And you can make smaller ones. This one we could make wide open. So I'm going to make petals on all sides. They are going to overlap a little bit, but I'll do that in the next round. And look, I'm varying my values. So same color, but adding more water to create a lighter value. And I'm just going to fill up this whole space, kind of crowd them all together. I will put green in between them later on. And then I'll show you with this brush too, um, because you don't have a point at the top, you can use the side of the brush. So using it on its side to create some thinner lines when we go back and do um, some of these details. And of course we have our smaller brush here too. We can add details with, but. So I'm going to keep going. All right. So that these are mostly dry. These are nice getting dry and we're going to go back and add some darker, more detailed bits. So these have lots of, okay. So the petals themselves, whoops, the petals themselves, are separated so here and they overlap each other so you can accentuate some of that and then they have lots of veining in them and I don't know if you can see that on camera probably not um, but they have lots of um, texture and veining in them so playing that up a little bit and here we can use kind of the edge of our filbert brush like this to create some of that texture 
So using a darker color, so this is where the petals kind of overlap each other. You don't have to outline it perfectly, but they're creating some definition. And then you can blend this out. If this is too dark for you, this is the top of this petal and it actually gets darker towards the bottom. Do that. I'm gonna show scooping up towards you that way. I'm gonna rinse my brush off and blend this out a little bit. And again, they still look a little funny because we don't have our centers in and that will really kind of bring them to life. And I'm doing this all with the edge of this brush. And then with your lighter ones, you might want to go lighter on the color. It's still darker than what you originally put down, but lighter than working on the darker one. So make sure to just kind of pay attention to your values and make the values kind of match the different, um, the different flowers that you're working on. See here, this overlaps a little here and you can even put in like, I'm going to put in another petal. And your veining can come from the top. It doesn't always have to come from the center on these. These aren't always like darker in the center and lighter at the edges. They're a pretty consistent color all the way through. And a little bit of lightness towards the middle of the petal, but. And then you can keep playing and doing this until you're content. And then next will be to let everything dry and add our centers. And then we're going to work on our greenery. So keep going with this. And then when you're done, we'll come back and we'll add our centers. All right, I'm back and I did not let everything dry yet, but I am adding even more layers to darken this colors because I decided halfway through after just putting on the texture that I wanted even darker colors to really get closer to kind of this dark, dark color and a little more pink. So look how dark I'm going. So this is the great thing about layering. When you start light enough, you always have room to go even darker. So I'm not going to do it to all of them, but I am going to put a glaze over these of this pinker color, pinker, darker color. So you can still see through it, but it's really changing the, the overall color of the whole flower. It went a little pinker, a little less as it was drying. It was just a little too um, desaturated, not as vibrant as I wanted it. So I am going, I am making bold choices here. So all I did was add more magenta and I'm using more um, pigment, less water, still water. I still want this to be able to communicate texture and see through the different layers, but you can see I'm going much darker. And as I'm doing this, I'm leaving bits of what you can see through behind on my first layer. So that way I am creating texture just by leaving areas open. I'm creating that kind of a little bit of a suggestion of that veining that we talked about earlier. And I'm moving quickly, as you can see, these are, these are loose. These are quick. I'm trying not to overthink it. 
using the shape that's already there. It was a little bit more, you know, slower, purposeful, deliberate. Now I'm like, the shape is already there. Let's just fill it in, give it pops of color. And I'm using all sides of my brush. So I'm using flat, the flat side when I really want to do wide areas. And then as I'm painting, I just turn it slightly and I get that nice thin line. So that's great about this brush. I don't have to worry about like changing the pressure too much. I just change the angle. So on a round brush, I'd have to worry about changing the pressure to get like up on that tippy tip. But this I paint on the one side for big flat wide. And then I just change the angle ever so slightly to get um, these thinner lines, thinner, more textured lines. All right. So I think I'm feeling good about these. We're going to start, we're going to let them dry now and add all of the centers. All right. So the centers, I'm still going to use my filbert brush. I'm going to use cadmium yellow light hue and some sap green. So really watered down sap green. So let me just clean this little section of the palette out a little bit so I can get a little bit more of a true yellow, but it's very yellow green in the center. It's a mixing of the two. So here's my yellow and here's my green, my sap green. And so let me put in the yellow first and I'm just going to basically fill the majority of the area with this yellow, just dotting it in. You can leave a few little white spots if you want. They'll kind of all get eaten up in the process. This one, the center got pretty devoured there. All right, so now we have yellow in our centers. We're going to let those dry a little bit. I'm going to mix up some green. A little bit darker. Basically, I'm just going to be creating little bits of rounded texture in the green. I'm going to switch to my smaller brush here and I'm going to, it's almost like in here minus all these little tiny things sticking up but almost like a little nest a little rounded nest of color of these the stamen so let me dry this really quick they're pretty dry i'm going to use my tiny little brush and i'm just going to start and they're not even fully dry yet. This one is. I'm just gonna start to create these rounded little lines that just indicate shadow. And now again, with these, you could use um, some masking fluid to mask out the white of like the little stamen that are popping out but we didn't do that with these these are just more loose and i'm going to change up some of the i'm going to give it um little pop out stamen but just in a different color instead of keeping it the white white green All right, so instead of white, I'm just gonna change the color. I'm gonna make it like a darker brownish green. I just took a little brown that was in here and that was, um, it was a burnt umber, or I'm sorry, a raw umber. It's a little raw umber in the green, so it's a darker green. And I'm just going to put a few little dots around each of them just to create some more texture in the center with some lines kind of going down through. And now the other thing you can do with this little tiny brush is really play up some of the texture on your petals. 
So we'll do that in just a second, just adding that final layer of texture. And I'm just doing a couple little dots, making them messy. They're not all perfect. They're a little oblong shaped, but they all have these little lines that kind of bring them back to the center. Some of them overlap the petals, some of them overlap the center part. With the little tiny brushes you have to refill often. They don't hold as much paint and water, obviously, um, but it does mean you're dipping your brush a lot more often. So just keep that in mind. There we go. And now I'm going to rinse that off. I'm going to wet my purple over here. Purple magenta. Make a nice dark saturated color. And I can take my little tiny brush and we can go in and add some more of that veining from the top and the bottom. It doesn't always have to come from the bottom. And these two, just like with any round brush, even though it's much more subtle, the more pressure you put on, the thicker the line you can get, and the less pressure, the thinner the line. But again, you see how I have to dip. I have to reload my brush really often. With a longer, um, so this is a short tip, round so a petite round with a longer like liner brush it actually would hold a little bit more you would still get kind of the same size tip but because it's longer it still holds a little bit more paint than this really short But definitely when you are working on control and you want a lot of control over these really fine details, this is a great little brush to have. Come from the top on some of these. And you can even use the dry brushing technique to your advantage. So as you run out of paint, you can still keep using it and letting it run out, creating like a different kind of texture. All right, and there we go. Let's now add, go back to our filbert brush and just add a little bit of greenery in between. So I'm just using sap green and there's a little purple in there, so that's okay. It's a little desaturated. For my leaves, I'm just creating tiny little leaf shapes in between using both the flat side and the edge. I am not overthinking this. I'm just trying to fill in the space in between not making it fully, you know, just blocky green, but just putting little tiny leaf shapes in between just to fill the space. And you can even go, you could kind of fill it all in with a light green and then put even a darker green in the leaf shape on top of it. So then we have that down and I could even pick up some more saturated green here and drop that in in a few spots just to give it some more um, contrast and dimension. There we go. This is super fun. Look at this beautiful without a lot of worry. There 
we go. And you can see here, I'll bring in one of these Lenten rose. This is a white one here that you can see, but you can see their leaves are these small, but very clustered, very dense green leaves. So that's kind of exactly what we're going for here. Lots of dense, clustered, small, short leaves. And you can leave white space if you want, or you can fill it all in. But there we go. Let's take off our tape and see what we have. For this cute little pattern design of these Lenten rows. And you can see I went much, so I did this one, and then this one, the flowers are bigger and even much darker um, in that color getting a little bit closer to this actual color here in our centers. And these had much more yellow centers and I put in black little lines there, but super fun project. Thank you so much for painting with me. This was great and I hope you give this one a try. Um, if you have or have don't have a filbert brush, you can still do the same thing with a round brush. It'll just be a little bit different in how you get your points or your thin lines versus your thick lines. And then um, if you have a tiny brush, maybe not this particular size or um, with the large round handle, that's okay. Just using a tinier brush for those smaller details. So thanks so much for painting with me today. I'm Shana Searcy. Don't forget to check out the description for um, all of the supplies as well as links to my social media and my studio crew classroom. Thanks again for painting with me. Happy painting y'all.